The square root of 2, or 2 to the 1 half power, is irrational. That is, a real number that cannot be expressed as the ratio of two integers. The decimal expansion is non-terminating and non-repeating. Let's go over a few ways that we can discover this fact. Number 1. Proof by Contradiction Classic method We'll start with a method called Proof by Contradiction. We begin with a set of assumptions, then show that if those assumptions are true, then they must lead to an impossible conclusion. When this happens, it shows that the set of assumptions we began with must be wrong, achieving the desired result. Let's assume square root of 2 can be represented as a simple fraction of whole numbers, a over b, where a and b have no common factors other than 1. In mathematical terms, they are coprime. From this, we can write the equality square root of 2 equals a over b. Squaring both sides of this equality gives us square root of 2 squared equals a over b squared. And the square of a square root is just the number itself, so this becomes 2 equals a over b squared. Using exponent properties, we can distribute the exponent of 2 into the numerator and denominator of the fraction. So we get 2 equals a squared over b squared. Now let's multiply both sides of this equality by b squared. We find 2b squared equals a squared, which we'll rewrite as a squared equals 2b squared. b is a whole number, so its square must also be a whole number. 2 times a whole number is always even, meaning a squared must be even. Thus, a itself is even, because a whole number must be either odd or even, and the square of an odd number is odd. But if a is even, we can express it as 2 times another integer, which we can call k. Take a equals 2k, and substitute into a squared equals 2b squared, 2k squared equals 2b squared. Again, we can distribute the exponent into the parentheses using exponent rules. So we get 2 squared k squared equals 2b squared, or just 4k squared equals 2b squared. Next, we'll divide both sides by 2, giving us 2k squared equals b squared. Similarly to before, k squared is a whole number, so 2k squared is even, and the equal value b squared must be even as well. Since b squared is even, b must also be even. If both a and b are even, they share a common factor of 2, contradicting our initial assumption that a and b share no common factors except 1. Hence, square root 2 cannot be rational. This is the most famous proof, often attributed to ancient Greek mathematicians like Hippasus or Euclid. However, sources contemporaneous to Hippasus do not describe him as having derived the proof, and the inclusion of the proof in Euclid's elements was an interpolation that is, an inclusion not discovered by Euclid himself. The true origin is unknown. 2. Prime Factorization Proof This approach is closely related to the classic proof by contradiction, but emphasizes the properties of prime factors explicitly. It begins the same way as the first proof. Again, we find a squared equals 2b squared, using the same sequence of steps as before. We've already walked through those steps once, so we'll skip past them this time. Now, for where this proof differs. You may know about the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, if not by name. This theorem states that every natural number greater than 1 can be uniquely written as a product of primes, which is called that number's prime factorization. In particular, let's focus on the prime factorization of square numbers. An example is 12 squared, or 144, whose prime factorization contains four twos and two threes. Notice that each prime number appears an even number of times in the factorization. This even applies to all of the prime numbers other than two and three, because those primes appear zero times, and zero is an even number. Ultimately, the reason this happens is that we multiplied two copies of 12 to get 144. So for each factor that appears in 12, it appears twice as many times in 144. This logic applies to square numbers in general, 
so each prime factor of a square number must appear an even number of times in the prime factorization of that square number. Returning to the proof, remember that a squared equals 2b squared. Of course, b squared is a square number, so the prime factor 2 must appear an even number of times in its prime factorization. When we multiply that by another factor of 2 to get 2b squared, an even number plus 1 is an odd number, so we must have an odd number of factors of 2 in 2b squared. But this is equal to a squared, which is a square number, so each prime in the prime factorization of a squared appears an even number of times. This clash proves square root 2 is irrational. 3. Infinite Descent Proof Proof by infinite descent is like the old saying, you can't fall forever into a hole that ends. Actually, that's not a real saying, but it gets the point across. The idea of a proof by infinite descent is to show that if a statement is true for some natural number, then it must also be true for a smaller natural number. This results in an infinitely descending chain of natural numbers, but that's obviously impossible. The set of natural numbers is well ordered, which means that any subset must contain a smallest natural number. So the existence of an infinite descent is impossible, which proves by contradiction that our assumed statement is false. In this case, once again, our proof will start similarly to the first proof. We will assume that square root 2 equals a over b, for some integers a and b. However, we will change our assumptions about a and b. Firstly, we will discard negative integers and require a and b to be natural numbers, which is needed for the proof to work. Luckily, square root 2 is a positive number, and if a positive number can be represented as a ratio of integers, then it can be represented as a ratio of natural numbers. Also, we will remove the requirement that a and b are coprime, as it is not necessary now. From here, the algebra is mostly the same as before. We will skip the steps that have remained unchanged under our new assumptions about the values of a and b. As a reminder, letting a equal to k, we found that a squared equals 2b squared, and that b squared equals 2k squared. As before, these two equalities prove that both a and b are even, so they share a common factor of 2. However, this is not a contradiction this time as we had not assumed that the fraction was in simplest form. Instead, if we bring back the equality square root 2 equals a over b, notice that we can divide both the top and bottom of the fraction by 2, and this will give us another ratio of natural numbers that also represents square root 2. The natural numbers will be smaller this time, since dividing any positive number by 2 gives you a smaller number. From here, we can just repeat the same process that we just did, with the new numerator and denominator serving as the new a and b. Using only the logic of our own assumption that square root 2 is rational, we can generate yet another pair of even smaller natural numbers, whose ratio is again equal to square root 2. Doing this over and over, the natural numbers involved will just keep getting smaller and smaller forever. This gives us our infinite descent, which is an impossibility, proving by contradiction that square root 2 is irrational. 4. Reciprocal Proof Our last proof of today, again a proof by contradiction, will use reciprocals. Like before, we will assume that square root 2 is a rational number. However, instead of writing a fraction to represent square root 2 itself, we'll instead consider the number square root 2 plus 1. Firstly, we can prove that a rational number plus a rational number is always a rational number. Let's represent the sum of two rational numbers as a over b plus c over d, where a, b, c, and d are all integers, and b and d aren't equal to zero. To add these fractions, we can give them common denominators. Multiplying the first fraction by d over d turns it into ad over bd, and multiplying the second fraction by b over b turns it into bc over bd. This is the same as multiplication by one, so the values of the fractions remain the same. Now, since the denominators are the same, we can just add the numerators, giving us AD plus BC over BD. The top and bottom are both integers, so this is a rational number. Back to square root 2 plus 1, we know that 1 is a rational number, since it's just 1 over 1. 
So if square root 2 is also rational, then so is square root 2 plus 1, and we can represent it as a ratio of integers. Let's say q and p. Again, we'll assume that the fraction is in simplest form, and we'll also assume that both q and p are positive. We know that q over p is greater than 1, and since p is positive, we can multiply both sides of the inequality to find that q is greater than p. In general, if a ratio of positive numbers is greater than 1, then the numerator has to be bigger than the denominator. Next, we'll consider the expression quantity square root 2 minus 1 times quantity square root 2 plus 1. To evaluate this, we can distribute twice. Quantity square root 2 minus 1 times quantity square root 2 plus 1 equals square root 2 times quantity square root 2 plus 1 minus 1 times quantity square root 2 plus 1 equals square root 2 times square root 2 plus square root 2 times 1 minus 1 times square root 2 minus 1 times 1. The square root of 2 times itself is just 2 by definition. We have a positive square root 2 and a negative square root 2 that cancel out. And finally, 2 minus 1 equals 1. That gives us the value of the expression. So what do you call two numbers that can be multiplied together to get the number 1? Those are called reciprocals. So we just showed that square root 2 minus 1 and square root 2 plus 1 are reciprocals of each other. You can obtain the reciprocal of a fraction by just flipping the numerator and denominator, which can be shown by a simple calculation. a over b times b over a equals ab over ab equals 1. We know that square root 2 plus 1 is q over p, so square root 2 minus 1 must be the reciprocal, p over q. Next, we'll show another property of fractions. If it's in simplest form, adding an integer will give another fraction with the same denominator in simplest form. We will use this calculation. a over b plus c equals a over b plus bc over b equals a plus bc over b. Since a and b are coprime, and bc is obviously a multiple of b, we know that a plus bc and b must also be coprime. You'll notice that square root 2 plus 1 and square root 2 minus 1 differ from each other by an integer, that being 2, which can be shown by a simple subtraction. With these values being q over p and p over q respectively, we just showed that these fractions must have the same denominator. In other words, p is the same as q, but the assumption that p equals q goes against our earlier statement that q is greater than p. So we have arrived at a contradiction once again, and square root 2 cannot be rational. And we are done.